Yeah, if you could just go ahead and come in this weekend to watch our office space review, that'd be great, okay? Welcome to Woodshed Reviews, where we look at films old and new, good and bad. And today we're going to look at the cult classic Office Space from 1999. Is that what we're doing? Today, I love that film. Cool. <laughs> it's your choice, obviously. Yeah. So, um, yeah. You're a big fan? Uh, I'm a big fan, yeah. Um, I think I uh, saw it about a year after it came out um, on VHS release. Back in the day, 2000 would have been. Um, yeah, and it's one of those films where often a film, if it comes along at the right time in your life, yeah. um, and this came along with like laser, laser precision. Yeah, I can imagine a lot of people can relate to this film, mm. especially if you're in your 20s. Yeah. Uh, kind of living that life. Well, yeah, pretty much. I think um, I was kind of working a very similar cubicle office job okay. to that, having just graduated and not really knowing what I was doing with myself. Yeah. Peter Gibbons' job sounds like he's just kind of crunching numbers or something like that. Wasn't a million miles away from that. I remember me and my flatmate, who also worked at the same place, seeing the trailer for this in another video that we'd uh, hired. And we immediately just looked at each other and went, we've got to get this. I'm thinking now it might be more fun to just get fired. And I've always wondered what that would take. Oh, Peter, listen. Uh, yeah, hired it out probably three or four times that year. Wow. Um, and we're just quoting it to each other. <laughs> Uh-oh. Sounds like somebody's got a case of the Mondays. And then kind of kind of forgot about it a little bit for a while. I went back to it a little while back and to see if it held up. And often with comedies, I think I find that often something you found hilarious 10, 15, 20 years ago doesn't always hold up. Oh, behave. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, baby. Yeah. So I was pleasantly surprised when I went back through this and I thought, yeah, this is still, this is still good. Well, it looks like you've been missing quite a bit of work lately. Well, I wouldn't say I've been missing it, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, similar to me, but I, I've not seen it nowhere near as many times as you. Um, saw it way back, way back in the day, almost. Mm. Um, enjoyed it then and um, it's actually Part of me was thinking, have I actually seen this film? I feel like I've seen it, but I couldn't really remember much. So yeah, when I stuck yeah. it on the other night, it all came flooding back and it held up. Yeah, definitely. Oh, good deal. I guarantee you On the verge of knocking it up with now for no reason. We've kind of given our preamble about it. We'll talk a little bit about the premise of the film. So it's uh, largely set in an office space, obviously. Our main characters, the bunch of them, four or five, mostly in their 20s. A few older chaps that have been there a bit longer, very jaded and f forgotten about and yeah. <laughs> all these things. Yeah, very humdrum, very cubicle office life sort of thing that kind of like had cropped up around that time. Yeah, because I think they're, um, what they're doing, they're working on the year 2000 bug, aren't they? The main character, P Peter, is, I think the other two have got slightly different jobs. It's a big company, so there's lots of different facts going on in that. But yeah, Peter's working on the, the year 2000 uh, millennium bug. Saving the world. Yep, and he did. So good for good for Peter. It doesn't really matter. I uh, I don't like my job, and uh, I don't think I'm going to go anymore. Peter's having an existential crisis. He's also having issues with his girlfriend, who takes him to a hypnoth what's it, a hypnotherap occupational hypnotherapist. Hypnotist. Are these real? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Unfortunately, he has a massive heart attack and dies on the spot whilst Peter is uh, under hypnosis. So uh, he then. Uh, kind of goes on in a sort of zen-like state of just doing whatever he wants. If he wants to turn up to work, he'll turn up. If he doesn't, he doesn't. And if he wants to be brazenly honest with them about what he actually does uh, with his job, then he will. Well, I generally come in at least 15 minutes late. Uh, I use the side door. That way Lumber can't see me. <laughs> and uh, after that, I just sort of space out for about an hour. And when he was in his zen-like mode, he 
plucked up the courage to go up to Jennifer Aniston yeah. and uh, ask her out. As you would. Yeah, showing us how it's done. Okay, well, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'm gonna go next door and get a table, and if you'd like to join me, uh, no big deal, all right? And if not, that's cool too, okay? Okay. All right. Cool as a cucumber. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what we were worrying about <laughs> back then. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, so yeah, Jennifer Aniston's got a small role in it. She would have been quite in the midst of friends at this point, I would have assumed. Yeah, I imagine so. So quite a, quite a, a nice little catch there. Yeah. Uh, for the director, um, Mike Judge, who most famous for Beavis and Butthead, that was his only film before this, so this was his first live action film. Yeah, and I believe this was based on an animation that he had done. Oh, the, yeah, the Milton, the Milton character, who's a, lot, a small recurring character in it. Um, it's based on a comic strip and oh, okay. some animations that he'd done, he'd done of that previous to be with some butthead. I used to have my own stapler too, and then when I moved back, they made me give back my stapler. So it's kind of loosely based on that, but obviously Milton's not the main character, uh, although he is an important, port, important part of the story. Yeah, poor Milton. Uh, everyone talks over him and... Can't get a word in. Mel, Did we're going to need to go ahead and move you downstairs into storage B. No, we, I, I uh, was told that I could have not some new people coming give, in, and no, we need all the space we can get. But there's no space. So if you could it, just go ahead and it, pack up your it, stuff it, and move it down there, but no, that would be terrific. Yeah, <laughs> he's got to be the best character in it. And there's a lot of great sort of, uh, we've talked about some of the main characters, but there's lots of great other um, characters threaded throughout it, um, Lawrence, um, Peter's, uh, I would say neighbour, but he's almost like a roommate because yeah. they can talk to each other through the walls. Hey Peter, man, check out Channel 9, check out this chick. Damn it, Lawrence, can't you just pretend like we can't hear each other through the wall? I love, uh, I can't remember his name, Tom, is it? Who, Tom, yeah. with the mats. Yeah, the jump to conclusion mats. Yeah, <laughs> fantastic. It was a jump to conclusions mat. You see, it would be this mat that you would put on the floor and would have different conclusions written on it that you could jump to. The characters are really good, they're strong, and um, yeah, you can identify with them. Yeah, it's that sort of thing where, you know, even if you've not worked a job like that, you've probably done something along that lines, and you can recognize these characters. They're more broad than just being, you know, people that would work at an information technology company. You know, yeah. you could apply it to quite a lot of different different aspects, particularly like Lumberg, the boss. Did you see the memo about this? For me, it kind of held up, even like, you know, right from the start, our introductions to our characters when they're in the, they're in like a queue of traffic. Yeah, I've got falling down vibes there. <laughs> One of our main characters, Michael Bolton, uh, yeah, singing singing a rap song, is it or a heavy metal? I can't remember. Rap guy, but he's a big kind of rap fan. That's and right. He, it's kind of like quite. Uh, he's got like Navy Seals posters up in his cubicle and stuff like that. Yeah, he's this kind of dweeby, white, whiter than white kind of yeah <laughs> guy. So I mean, we all know people uh, like that. Radling shots nonstop until I see your monkey ass drop and let your homies know who done it. Cause when it comes to this gangster shit, you motherfuckers know who run it. Uh, we're standing up for our own shit. But probably the standout scene, com comedy wise for me, is the printer scene. Yeah, mm. yeah, definitely. That was, that was funny. Back up in your ass with the resurrection. Is the group harder than an erection that shows no affection? They want to ban us on Capitol Hill. Cause it's die, motherfuckers, die, motherfuckers. And that's been parodied quite quite a bit, I think. But yeah, I love I love that and Michael Bolton's uh, overreaction <laughs> to it, playing on tropes of like things, like, I guess, crime films and uh, mafia films and stuff like that. So uh, Peter and his friends, they kind of work out a way to um, steal money from the company. Every time there's a bank transaction where interest is computed, you know, thousands a day, the computer ends up with these fractions of a cent, which it usually rounds off. But what this does is it takes those little remainders and puts it into an account. 
This sounds familiar. Yeah, they did in Superman 3. Right. Yeah. Yeah, so that's the plan to do that. Unfortunately, it uh, goes a little too well. Yeah, I think what some crazy amount of money they get, 300,000. What happened? You tell me, Michael, it's your software. Yes, it's your software. You know, corporate accounting is sure as hell gonna notice 305,000, 300... 2613, Michael! So they're like, right, they're definitely gonna notice that this has uh, gone missing. Yeah, so they start to panic. Um, Start thinking about jail time. <laughs> Pound you in the ass jail, uh, yeah. <laughs> as Michael uh, finds out. We get caught laundering money, we're not going to White Collar Resort Prison. No, no, no. We're going to federal pound me in the ass prison. Oh, yeah, I love this reaction at the barbecue when he's speaking to the lawyer. <laughs> Kick someone's ass the first day or become someone's bitch. Then everything will be all right. Why do you want to ask anyone? Oh, no, oh, no, we'll just say something. It's, yeah. In the meantime, in the background, Milton. That's all just a way to say we need to bring Milton into it. Yeah. yeah. I think he finds out that, I don't know if he finds out, but uh, the boss mentions that he was fired four years ago. Yeah, when they're doing the downsizing, um, they can't even find Milton on, on record, so it's kind of like makes sense as no one's really, um, really sees or pays any attention to Milton. Yeah. Uh, no one listens to him. Um, and they stop paying him, basically. Okay. I set the building on fire. So yeah, this is kind of going on, threaded out throughout the film. You know, doesn't seem like it's going to come to be an important part or anything like that, but um, he decides, uh, uh, he's, I think he says, that's the last straw. And uh, when Peter uh, arrives at Inatech the next morning, he's got a confession letter and checks that he's made out to pay them back and he's prepared to go to prison. But he finds Inatech is ablaze. But the fire effectively covers up the, the crime. Somehow. Yeah, I mean, for a huge uh, tech company, I guess in 2000, that... Maybe Possibly. people might have might have bought into that a bit more than yeah. they would now. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but yeah, that is possibly a plot point. Yeah, I'm sure there would be some sort of mainframe somewhere that was um, had that information on it. But hey, they burned the computers in, in a tech building, so that's that's a crime gone. Yeah, that's how you deal with Skynet. <laughs> no problem. We don't definitely know that Milton did it, but it seems pretty likely. I would say there's maybe uh, a couple couple of niggles I, I have with it. I kind of would like to know that Lumberg kind of disappears at the end. I don't know if you noticed that. Um, oh, yeah. And it's never really explained why. Um, but then a deleted scene, um, they talk about um, going to Lumberg's funeral after the fire, indicating that he burned Yikes. or he perished in the fire. I'm glad they kept that out. It's a bit dark. It's a bit dark, yeah. You guys go to Lumberg's funeral? <laughs> Shit, no. Yeah. No. But there is a mystery going on there because Lumberg hasn't turned up to the office that morning. Mm -hmm. He's li oh, he's late, which wouldn't be like him, not like his character. Yeah, something else going on. I trolled through the deleted scenes and stuff, but I couldn't point anything together. I, I saw some, I couldn't see it, but someone said that his car is in his parking space during the fire. Right. But I couldn't see that. I'll need to check it. If I can find it, I'll put it on here. Yeah, and maybe Peter's state of mind is maybe it's not totally clear when he's when he's under hypnosis and when he isn't, and why he kind of comes out of that a bit. It's a little yeah. bit vague. Hypnosis, you kind of gradually come out of it. Right. I felt like that's what happened to him, I guess. Yeah, maybe just a little cue or a visual thing might have kind yeah. of helped there. I think they were kind of implied that when he realised that his actions were, well, not his actions directly, but uh, were. Um, you know, it was benefiting him, but his friends were going to um, be punished for it, going to lose their jobs and stuff. Oh, yeah. Maybe it kind of it hinted that that maybe brought him out of it. I don't know what happened to me at that hypnotherapist. And I don't know, maybe it was just shock and it's wearing off now. But when I saw that fat man keel over and die, Michael, we don't have a lot of time on this earth. We weren't meant to spend it this way. To know what your main character's state of mind is, is 
is a, is, is a uh, boring, you know. wake-up moment sort of thing, yeah. Yeah, it could have been done like that. And there's lots of moments in the film that, you know, dreamlike things or people having imaginary flights of fantasy and stuff, so they could have, could have done that. Peter, what's happening? Uh, could you give me those TPS reports ASAP, okay? <laughs> Yeah, I just, I just love the characters. Um, you wanted more of them, which is a good thing. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and it wasn't a long film. It was just nice, nice length. Yeah, very tight, an hour and a half. Um, yeah, uh, a lot of memorable moments. Mm. A few laugh out loud moments. What would you do if you had a million dollars? I'll tell you what I'd do, man. Two chicks at the same time, man. <laughs> That's it? Definitely recommend this one. Yeah, definitely. And a little aside, I don't know if you're aware, but apparently there's, um, a, well, there is a sort of reference to uh, Pete Gibbons a couple of times in Ricky Gervais's um, The Office. You should have seen what you got, Pete Gibbons. Oh, it's how yeah. Oh, remember that? Probably was an influence on it then. I think so. You would imagine so, you know. I think Ricky Gervais would probably be someone that would have been aware of that film. Yeah. Uh, probably influenced by it to some degree. Um, and so that was a little, uh, it might just be a coincidence, mm -hmm. um, but Peter Gibbons, I don't know, that seems quite, and with the, with both those sort of that film and that series being, you know, quite similar, yeah. Um, then yeah, uh, it's just a little, little factoid maybe that's uh, a shared universe, could, Pete, uh, the, Pete, the Pete Gibbons shared universe. I shouldn't have done some sort of crossover. Finna get your murder case, the murder right. Make it crease if you caught up in the world while it's dying. I guarantee you fright, cause I on the verge of knocking the cup of thumbs out for no reason. Once I get down, I'll be no breathing. It's safe with We talked briefly about Michael Bolton, one of the characters in it. And uh, Michael Bolton himself um, has actually did he did a, a little skit. Well, at least your name isn't Michael Bolton. You know, there's nothing wrong with that name. There was nothing wrong with that till I was about 12 years old and that extremely talented ass clown started winning all those Grammys. That was a good sport. Of That's cool. I told those fudge packers I like Michael Bolton's music. Oh. That is not right, Michael. Well, jump to the conclusion then. <laughs> you, you thought that went up, hadn't you? Yeah. <laughs> That's all I got. Perfect. Uh, yeah, okay. Um, I want to say four and a half, but I'm just going to be objective about it and say that it's a four. Four box. For me, it's probably like, uh, you know, I like it so much and it was so, uh, maybe not influential, but sort of like, you know, a big kind of like uh, love of mine from back in the day. Yeah. That personally, I would maybe say four and a half, but I'm going to be objective and say four. Yeah, I can understand the high rating, definitely. Yeah. Um, I'll give it uh, three and a half. Fair enough. Yeah. That's fair enough. They let you have sex with women? They sure do. Okay, I'll do it. Office space. Office space. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to think of a quote from it to end this. I know. <laughs> um, it has to be a Lomberg thing, wouldn't it? Probably, yeah. Ooh, yeah. Um, I'm going to have to go ahead and sort of disagree with you there. Well, I uh, hope you enjoyed the review of Office Space. Check it out if you haven't already. And if you have, check it out again. Uh, and we'll see you for the next show. See you later. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha,